for us to be his sons and daughters. For all of my sisters and brothers that wanted to be here, that are on the virtual platform, we give glory, honor, and praise that you're able to see today, that you're able to hear today, that you're able to feel today, that you're still able to be in the flow of God. God is merciful. God is love. God is all in all. Won't you bow your heads with me? Gracious God, our Father, once again in this morning's watch, you allowed us to get up, to wash up, to dress up, to drive up to this place where we have come, Father God, to worship you, to praise you. We've come to dope on you. We've come to love on you. We come with thanksgiving in our souls with so much gratitude that you, Father God, have seen fit to allow us to see a 52nd anniversary of one of your temples in this nation, in this world. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would pour fresh oil on us this morning, that would run from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet, that, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would open our hearts and our minds, not about situations that we left behind us, but, Father God, about the praise, the glory, and the honor that will be
know God is real. Can you give him some glory? Can you give him a hallelujah? Because God is good. All that we are and all we hope to be, our God is good. Not because, but just because. He created us. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. If you are visiting with us for the first time this morning, I ask that you would stand so that we might welcome you to the family of City Temple of Baltimore. Amen. Amen. To God be the Lord. I hope and pray that as we go on into the service and the celebration of our 52nd anniversary, that you'll have an opportunity to meet and greet our First Lady and our very fine pastor, the Reverend Dr. Grady A. Jurgen Jr. Be blessed and continue to walk with us as we take this 52nd anniversary celebration pathway. Amen. 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 And for visitors on the virtual platform, we would not let you go. We want you to know that you can always reach into us if you have a desire, but you can't get here and you need prayer or whatever your needs may be at this moment. You may dial 410 462-4800 and leave us a message and we will return that. At this time, we are going to have our morning announcements and our announcements read as such. The Outreach Ministry is collecting Walmart gift cards of $10 or more for our Christmas outreach activity. Please do, please do donate. Please, I'm, I'm a little stunned right here because there's a word that shouldn't be. The donation amount with the cards can be anywhere from 10 on up. If you want to donate a thousand, I'll take it. Okay. It is requested that all gift cards are donated by Sunday, December the 11th, 2022. Please refer to the bulletin announcement for more information. The women's ministry is collecting items for the House of Ruth. Please refer to the bulletin announcement for a list of requested items. You may place your donated items in the collection box or in the church office. Please be reminded that there is a list of all activities for our anniversary month in your bulletin and we ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly to partake of all of them. And lastly, we are asking each church member to complete the request for information sheet in the bulletin. This is very important as we approach the winter season with the potential for inclement weather and the need to make closing adjustments and the unknown impact of COVID, the COVID virus and the flu during this season. Please place these completed slips in your offering basket. Amen? Amen. Amen. And at this time, I see Pastor Appreciation. How could I forget? We expect the room, the, the house of God, on next Sunday to be as full as we are right now as we celebrate our pastor. And on his journey, we want to make sure that we are all there to appreciate the man of God that God has placed in this house that is always available to each of us in sickness and death and just having issues that we want to confer with him about that he has never said no to us. He has always said yes. And that yes is to God. And he is doing God's work. And we really want to praise God in a separate way about our pastor for it's now been over five years. Where is Mrs. Jurgen? Since 2016, you tell me God isn't good. Six years. He is a survivor of lung cancer, fourth stage lung cancer. He has survived and will survive and will not stop surviving until God says, I call you home. Amen. And with that said, now I am going to ask that we govern ourselves appropriately. We know what we need to be doing for appreciating our pastor. I hope and pray everyone got an envelope and you can have an extra one. Again, I'm, I am up here saying, you know, I'll take your money. Okay. <laughs> and with that said, let me turn it over to Rev before I go too far. Good morning, City Temple. It is good to see all of you 
in this which is now the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 God is still blessing us. He is still watching out for us. And he's still taking care of us. So it's good to be here this morning. Let me take a moment to say thank each and every one of you for all of your birthday gifts. Amen. Amen. You have blessed my heart, my soul, and my spirit. And if you still have any gifts, please see me after the service. Amen. Amen. Let me also thank those of you, I think there were about 20 persons yesterday on our Zoom uh, um, workshop. Thank you very much. It was a profound experience. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So you will be hearing more about that. We thank Reverend Carl Hamiel for sharing with us on yesterday. I think we're going to be better because of that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please read all of the other announcements that you see in the bulletin regarding events in the life of our church. I'm sure that all of you are aware now that Brother Calvin Thrower passed away uh, this past week, and we ask you to keep his family in your prayers. The services for him will be on Thursday, the 17th of this month, the viewing, and it will be at Wiley Funeral Home at 701 North Mount Street from 5 to 8 p.m. The funeral will be on November the 18th at City Temple. The wake at 10.30, the funeral services at 11 a.m. So please, ma'am, please, sir, keep the family in your prayers. God is able, and he can do so many things. But we thank God for the life of Brother Thrower and how he has been a faithful member to this branch of Zion. Amen. Amen. We come now to that moment when we lift ourselves in prayer for all of our sick and shut-in members, for all of those who are in need. We know God will supply. Yes, he will, because he is able. So we're going to ask Deacon Greg Reed if he will come now and lead us to the throne of grace. When we pray, God listens. God listens and God answers. Amen. Amen. Father God, for being so good to us, better than we've been to ourselves. And so we thank you. We thank you for last night sleeping in a world unknown, for your grace covered us, watched over us, and then your mercies brought us to a brand new day, blessing us with another chance to try and get it right. Yet, Lord, even though we may not get it right this time, we still thank you because you know our hearts. And so, we say thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercies that followed us through all these years. 52 years standing on this corner serving your people, oh Lord. And so we thank you. We ask that you just continue to be with us, oh Father God, because we need you now more than ever. Father God, we ask that you just be with our pastor, our under-shepherd, Lord. 
Girdle them up, oh Father God. Be with them. Be with them as only you can. Oh Father God, we ask that you be with his help meet. Be with them. If the pastors and the, and the ministers and, and the deacons and be with our congregation, oh Father God. Each and every one of us. We need you, Father God, collectively and individually. And so we ask, Father God, that your grace and your mercies continue to be with us. But we pray, oh Lord, we weep and we pray for not only ourselves, but for others in this city and our people, Father God. This nation, oh Lord, we ask that you just be with us because we need you. Be with those who are sick and shut in, Lord. Be with those who walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Let them know that they walk not alone. Those who are the least, the last, the lost, and the left out. Oh, Father God, we need you to be with those who are homeless and hungry. Those who are in prison, Father God, we ask that you be with them. We need you, Father God, as only you can be with us. We ask that you come, come with your quickening power. We can do a sacred frame in these sacred hearts of ours, oh Lord. Be with us as only you can. Father God, we love you. We bless your name in this house. We praise your holy name. We magnify you, O oh Lord. So come. Come with your quickening power. We thank you, Father God. It's in the blessed and awesome name of Jesus that we pray this and so much more. For there's so much more to pray for. Oh Lord, we thank you. It's in the blessed and matchless name of Jesus that we pray this prayer. Amen. And amen. temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the south side 
of the East Gateway. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then led me across. The water was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet and led me across again. This time the water was up to my knees. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Yeah, yeah. Then he measured another 1,750 feet and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in but too deep to walk through. He asked me, have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back along the riverbank. When I returned, I was surprised by, my, by many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, this river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea. The waters, there, the waters of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea, for its waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea. All the way from Injida to in Anglia, the, show, the shores will be covered with nets dying in the sun. Fish for every kind will fill the Dead Sea, just as they fill the Mediterranean. But the marshes and, sw and swamp swamps will not be purified. They will still be salty. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. And there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop, crop every month for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing. The blessed word of God for the blessed people of God. May this passage give you insight, give you power, and give you love.
and your love that you pour out to us each and every day of our lives. So we say thank you. As we come at this hour, I ask that you allow me to sit down while you stand up and speak, if you will, to this your servant, that we might hear a word that will lift our spirits, that will help us to run on and see what the end might be. We say thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us each and every day of our lives. Now, dear Lord, if you will, let the words of this, thy servant's mouth, and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our blessed redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the title of this morning's message is Everything Lives Wherever the river flows. As you have already heard, the text is found in the 47th chapter of the book of the prophet Ezekiel, verses 1 through 12. It is a part of the fourth and final vision Ezekiel receives from God regarding Judah's future. It is a vision that reveals just how the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Scholars date the writing of this text in 573 BCE. For 25 years now, Ezekiel has lived among the children of Israel who have been taken captive by the Babylonian Empire. Their captivity has been extremely painful, not because of the way the Babylonians treated them, but because of the destruction the Babylonians brought to Jerusalem and the temple. Their sentiment is captured in the words of the poet who wrote the 137th Psalm. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skills. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider you my highest joy. But on this day, the 25th anniversary of the darkest day in Judah's history, the Spirit of God gives Ezekiel a vision of things to come. It is a vision of a new Jerusalem, yes. a Jerusalem to which God returns in the glory of his power and his might, yes. a vision that provides the prophet and the people with a new hope in the midst of what is for them the worst possible circumstances. According to one commentator, it is one of the most compelling expressions of hope for life found in the Old Testament. I invite you to come and go with me as we seek to see what Ezekiel saw, to hear what Ezekiel heard, to feel what Ezekiel felt. And in it, we may find hope for the living of these days. And God knows we need all the hope we can get. First of all, everything lives wherever the river flows because of the source of the origin of the river. According to Ezekiel's vision, the river begins at the throne of God atop Mount Zion. It begins at the threshold of the temple. It begins in the inner court at the altar of sacrifice inside the Holy of Holies. Yes. This is the place where the Spirit of God dwells, where God rules and reigns, where his power is revealed and his glory is made known. He who is the creator, the sustainer, and the keeper of life dwells here. Mm -hmm. Let me mention in passing, during my preparation, I discovered Jerusalem, the holy city, has no rivers or perennial streams. Mm -hmm. 
the water is supplied by eight to ten springs, yeah. a system of systems and reservoirs and conducts and aqueducts, but it has no perennial live life-giving, life-sustaining river. Therefore, if there is to be life-giving water in Jerusalem, it must come from elsewhere. In this case, it comes from above. Back in the day, a song was recorded entitled, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. Y'all know something about that. <laughs> for our purposes, I want to change one word in the title of that song. I want to suggest that many of us are looking for life in all the wrong places. There are times when Pat and I have had the opportunity to slow the peace of our lives. And we did so. We remembered that we can be so busy looking for life and trying to live what we think is life that we miss living altogether. We can and we do become victims of Madison Avenue advertising, persuading us that we need this or that life. Victims of popular trends, press pressing us to do things the way or be the way so that we can fit in and we can have good life. We yeah. are victims of our own selfish ambitions and sense of self-sufficiency to the degree that we believe we can make it on our own and experience a good life. We are the victims of the belief that if we attain enough power, have enough money and influence life at its best, it will be granted to us. But then, and if we achieve all these things, the truth remains that there is a hunger in our hearts that is not satisfied. There is a thirst in our spirits that is not quenched. There is a restlessness in our souls that finds no rest. There is uncertainty in our minds that excludes, inserted, that excludes certainty. If we are to find life, we so, you, we so desperately seek and need we must look beyond whatever the realities of this world might offer. Yeah. We must look to the life-creating, life-giving waters yeah. that flow from the throne of God, for He and He alone can satisfy us with abundant and eternal life. It is for His throne that the river of life flows, and everything lives wherever the river flows. Secondly, Everything lives wherever the river flows because on the way and the manner in which the river flows. In that vision, Ezekiel's guide drives, draws his attention to the entrance of the temple where he sees water flowing from the threshold of the temple. Yeah. The water begins as nothing more than a trickle, mm -hmm. like drops of a, bar, a, of a bottle. It trickles down and, e and ever deepening and ever widening and ever increasing stream like a great river rushing to some appointed destination. According to Ezekiel's <coughs> description, the river becomes deeper and wider and it flows at his direction. Ezekiel follows the, his guide as he walks into the flow of the river measuring its distance and depth. At a distance of 1,700 feet from the shore, the river is ankle deep. Yeah, yeah. At a distance of 3,500 feet from the shore, the river is knee deep. At a distance of 5,250 feet from the shore, the river is waist deep. Yeah, yeah. At a difference of 7,000 feet from the shore, the river is so deep that one must swim to get to the other side. But the flow of the river is so great, even swimming across is not possible. What begins as a trickle from the throne of God deepens and widens at its flows. James Stewart, the famous Scottish preacher says, 
there's something wrong with our religion experience if it is not an ever deepening tide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Yeah. There is something wrong with our religious experience if it is not an ever deepening tide. For years now, the vision of our church has been that of spiritual maturity. We have made the conscious and deliberate effort to grow spiritually. The reason we have done so is that our lives and in this life of our faith, our knowledge of God will grow. Our experiences of and with God will broaden. Our relationship with God will become closer and more intimate. We ought to have new relations of and new insights into God we serve with the passing of time. But there is a truth in this life that we cannot ignore. The faith we had as babes in Christ will not be sufficient for us when we are adults. Life will have many more complications and challenges for us to deal with. In this life and in our faith, we ought to be moving from one deep degree of faith to another, a degree of strength to another, moving to grace and glory to another, moving to mercy and compassion to another, moving to our relationship relationship with God to another. In the words of that old spiritual, every round goes higher and higher. For the past years, Pat and I spent a part of our vacation time in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Amen. <laughs> During that time, I discovered something about experiencing the ocean and its power. We can experience the ocean's power in ankle deep water. We can begin to experience the ocean's power in knee deep water. We can experience even more of the ocean's power in waist deep water. But if you can master the courage to venture out into neck deep water, not only will you experience the ocean's power, power, but you will also experience a peace and serenity that cannot be experienced in shallow water. I submit to you that the deeper you venture out into the waters of this river, the deeper you will experience the knowledge and understanding of our relationship with God. This is the reason everything lives wherever the river flows. Thirdly, everything lives wherever the river flows because the river has life-giving power. Yes. I suggest we follow the path of the river, river to see where it, re, it reveals. There is a multitude of great tree, trees growing along the banks of the river. Mm-hmm. Trees that are full of fruit. Yeah. Fruit that maturates mo- monthly. Fruit that is for the nourishing and the renewing of the body. Fruit that also nourishes the spirit by providing love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It is the kind of fruit needed needed for wading into the deeper depths of the river that that God, like himself, is from everlasting to everlasting. Notice, too, that the leaves of the trees do not wither nor are forever or are always green, leaves that are filled with healing properties. These are the leaves that cause the blind to see, that cause the disease to become healthy, that cause the broken to become whole, that causes the crippled to walk, the troubled minds to be made peaceful. Of any and every illness will be transformed into wellness. That is why there is no more sickness and sorrow for those who live on the banks of that river. But there is more. Pay close attention to where the river flows. 
It flows into the Jordan Valley. Well, inscribed as a place of extreme desolation where nothing can survive or thrive. The Dead Sea is in this valley. It is called the Dead Sea because the waters are so saturated with salt and minerals that absolutely nothing, no green plant or water flower, no fish or shell creature, no living thing, nothing can survive there. And yet, this is where the river dares to flow. Once the waters of this river flows into the place, the desolate Jordan Valley Rift comes to life. The Dead Sea is transformed into a fresh water sea teeming with every kind of fish. So much so that people flock to its banks to fill their nets with all the fish their nets can bear. What was once a place of death had been transformed into a place of life in all of its abundance. I submit to you that there is power in the flowing waters of this river. Power to redeem the wastelands of our lives. Power to make new old things that have lost their worth. Power to give you new life to place in our lives that are dead. Power to make the barren fruitful. Power to nourish the dry places. Power to make the bitter sweet. Power to heal the unhealthy. Power to make the dead come alive again. What Ezekiel's vision suggests is there is nothing that is beyond the grace of God. There is nothing that is outside of the mercy of God. There is nothing that cannot be reached by the compassion of God. There is nothing that cannot separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus. For everything lives wherever the river flows. There remains a question that begs to be answered before we can end this message. Mm. What is it mm. that gives this river its life-creating, life-giving, life-sustaining properties? Mm -hmm. Properties so powerful mm. that everything lives wherever this river flows. Yes. Conduction conditions are the present state of things. From where do the waters of this river receive their power? I have already stated that the waters begin to flow at the throne of God. Yeah. But to see the real source yeah. and origin and the water's power, we must invoke a preacher's privilege yeah. and blur the lines that exist between the old and the new tenants. Well, uh -huh. If we look closely, we will see that God is not alone on the throne. Yes. At the right side of God, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, shares the universal throne. Yes. With that in mind, return with me to Calvary, mm -hmm. to the eyes of John. Well. According to John, Roman soldiers were dispatched back to Calvary near the end of the day we call Good Friday yeah. to remove the bodies mm -hmm of Jesus and the thieves at the cross. Mm -hmm. One of the soldiers seeing that says Jesus was already dead, pierced him in the side. Well, yeah. John's account then says immediately water and blood came out of his side. Well, I submit to you that the trickling that gives birth to this river comes from the pierced side yeah. of Christ Jesus. Yeah. It suggests to me that the waters of this river is a mixture of the blood and the water of Jesus. It is of little significance the amount of water which the blood is mixed because this is blood that saves. This is blood that redeems. This is blood that reconciles. This is blood that rescues. This is blood that that is sanctified. Yeah. This is blood that preserves. In other words, the water is mixed with blood that bears the gift of yeah. abundant and eternal life. Yeah. That is why Jesus said to the Samaritan, the water I give you will be spring up 
and bubbled up to eternal life. He says to the crowd, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever is dead will live forevermore. Why? One hymn writer, one writer wrote, there is a fountain filled with blood. Another hymn writer said, there is power, power, wonderful working power. Another hymn writer wrote, the blood will never lose its power. Another writer said, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Another writer said, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he poured out his blood for you and me? Thanks be to God for his ever loving love for us. Amen. 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 worship experience this morning. Amen. We want to thank our pastor for that inspiring message. And thank God for blessing us with you.
at this time, I've been asked to share um, from Lynette Davis that we're going to turn over um, the service, the activity now, to the hosts and hostesses of Martins West. And we're asking that you remain in your seats and they will come to your table and tell you when it's time for you to go up for the breakfast bar brunch. Thank you all so much for coming. Since we are moving to the next part of this celebration, uh, we're gonna take a moment, if you will, to give the benediction, but we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Amen. Because as hungry y'all. Amen. Amen. So will you bow your heads? Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this worship experience. We say thank you that you have traveled with us for the past 52 years, telling the world about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, to those, for those who have been with us this morning, both present in this building and those who are probably in their homes or wherever they may be. My prayer is that you have been, hopefully you have been blessed by the word and that you will use that word to keep on keeping with you. So we say thank you, dear God. Thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and the Lord give you Jesus' name we pray. Amen.